probably going to be a lot of editing. You, you, you need somebody to, like, keep me and Shep leveled. You don't put me and Shep together on the same show. There's going to be a lot of curses, a lot of obscenities, but I'm going to do my best since I'm hosting tonight to avoid all that. But, hey, you know, this is the heel cast. No baby faces over here. Yo, Kyle, they should fucking put one of those parental advisory stickers on this one. Yeah, this one should get a parental advice. If you're listening, you got the kids in the car. I, I don't know. Put, put on some WWE for them or something. You know, let let them listen to a WWE podcast because this is the Impact Asylum heel cast, and Kyle and Chef are running it tonight. And I, you know, I just I, I want to apologize to everybody on the website. Uh, just because they, they didn't see this coming at all, but all 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 banter, all all hurls beaten aside, not hurls beaten off, all hurls beaten aside. We're here with a purpose. We're here to cover this week's excellent episode of Impact. Uh, before we get into the episode, Shevsky, let's uh, let's just hit him with the news real quick. Uh, so one night only has been moved to Thursday night. So. Right after Impact, uh, One Night Only, this one's called Turning Point. One Night Only, Turning Point 2017 has been moved to Thursday night. So right after Impact, it'll be available for purchase on your pay-per-view. However you do it, there's a million different ways to uh, watch these shows. Just go on Google, type in Impact Only, uh, One Night Only, uh, Turning Point 2017. You'll be able to find it on. They they have so many streaming websites. There's like Fight TV. Fight Network. There's so many ways to watch the show. So if you're a true Impact diehard, you are watching this show. I, I can't stand when people don't pay any mind to the one night only shows. You're gonna get some kick ass wrestling live from the Impact Zone. You're gonna get some Chef. Chef's gonna be all over that episode, aren't you, Chef? You know what? I'm definitely gonna be on there. And oh, not for nothing, but like I keep trying to tell people, the fucking crowd is actually so much better now. It's not. The crowd from, like, you know, two, three years ago where it was fucking dead. Like, the crowd is, you know, they're lit. It, it's, it was a damn good fucking show. They, they, they got to figure out a way to, uh, like, mic the crowd up better. You know what I mean? Like, I, you're always telling us how, uh, how the crowd is, but a lot of times it doesn't translate to TV. They got to figure out a way to get the crowd louder. I, I've always said that. Uh, it, it varies episode to episode, but overall, I, I feel like... They, the audio that we get on our television sets just doesn't do you guys justice there in the impact zone. You know what? You know what? Completely honest, I think it is. I think because you know you'll have your match where you're like the crowd is like eh whatever with these guys, but then you'll have your crowd where you know say like it's a uh, it's an El Patron match, an Edwards match, uh, a James Storm match. You know the ones that the crowd really really like, they're going to be the louder ones. You know, but when and I and I like Marche Rocket, but when you got Marche Rocket versus like Mahabali Shera, you know, don't expect to hear much. Yeah, no, that's your your, uh, your undercard slash underdog matchup. I feel you, I feel you. So, yeah, one night only is going to be on Thursday nights instead of Friday. I don't know if this is going to be a permanent thing, but pretty cool. Uh, definitely going to get that one. Uh, so moving on, we really don't have that much news this week. Uh, you know, I pulled up whatever I could. Uh, one thing that's been uh, hitting the sheets throughout the week is uh, the Hardys and Impact are still at each other's throats over the rights to the whole broken brilliance thing. Uh, Rebby's Twitter fingers are back in action. She's uh, been tweeting the past few days. Uh, I'm sure you guys saw it. Uh, Karen Jarrett randomly tweeted, shut the fuck up. That's all she said, shut the fuck up. And didn't, didn't at anybody. Didn't, you know, put any context there, but we all know who she was talking about. Uh, Rebby Herpy, uh, Rebby Hardy, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of uh, legal issues there. The thing is that gets me, Shep, is, like, we really don't know. Like, we hear these dirt sheet reports, and then we read the tweets, but there's no actual, like, documentation of what's going on between the Hardys and Impact. It's all just he say, she say at this point. That's why I don't really like to cover it too much because most of it is just, like, speculation. Uh, when it's all said and done, we're going to find out the, the for sure what really happened, uh, and I, I, it's going to be very interesting to read about. But as of right now, apparently uh, Impact and the gang are 
their uh, just steady uh, trademarking. That's what I'm looking for. Trademarking. They're just trademarking all these uh, broken, brilliance uh, things, and I guess they're fighting for it. I guess WWE is trying to go through with it. Maybe I don't know, but uh, you know, it's funny because Rebby put out a tweet where she was like. Uh, Cena is going after an eight-month-old pregnant woman, like, just kind of making herself sound like the victim, but it's like, she's the one that put out the fuck the owl shirt. She was the one talking more shit than anybody. Like, stay out of the kitchen if you can't handle the heat, right, Chef? You know what? I completely agree with that. I mean, and I, and I kind of said something about that. Than anybody. She was talking yeah. more shit than anybody. And that's what I'm saying. Like, like I don't want to make it sound like it's always some street thing, because it's not, because... I mean, you can have some dude in the rich neighborhood. I mean, look at Gotti. But if you run your motherfucking mouth, expect to get repercussions because that's how the shit works. I don't care if you're in a rich neighborhood. I don't care if you're in the hood. If you run your fucking mouth, someone's eventually going to get tight. And you know what? You're going to have to deal with that person. The only thing is, if you're going to keep running your mouth and, and talking mad reckless, and I mean, yo, your shirt literally says, fuck that owl. Like, not, you know, like TNA sucks. You're also like, fuck that shit. You don't just say, fuck that. Like, if it, oh, fuck that. No, you're like, fuck that. You know what I mean? So if you're going to try to be about it like that, and then now all of a sudden you're going to be like, oh, my God, like, you know, defenseless me. Well, yo, don't open your fucking mouth then. You know what I mean? Like, if she would have shut the fuck up and let legal actions be whatever it was going to be, then she looks like the motherfucking, you know, better person. Impact took the high road. And was like, we're not going to get into a war words with you. They, and they did. I mean, did Karen sit there and say, shut the fuck up? Yeah. Is it entertaining? Yup. I like Karen Jarrett for saying it. Please, do it again. Tell us to fuck up. We all know what it was about. Uh, some other uh, rumors buzzing around. Uh, it, you know, it probably did get mentioned last week, but I don't remember. I'm shot, but I'm just going to throw it in there anyway since it's on the subject. Uh, there's a story going around uh, that Matt Hardy was trying to get our impact lord and savior, Jeremy Borash, to jump ship with him to the WWE. That's a joke, man. I mean, sure, it would be a great, uh, you know, uh, as you know, a business, it would probably be a good opportunity for JB to go try something else in the industry, but it's like the impact fans, that's our guy. We we need JB. We can't lose JB. That would be a bigger loss than any wrestler on the roster, I personally feel. JB is Mr. TNA. That's who JB M- is. JB MVP. Absolutely. So, uh, some other news. Uh, Jeff Jarrett tweeted out that he will be heading to L.A. for two days of meetings. We will see what old Slapnut has up his sleeve this time. I love when they go out on the road because every time Jeff and Ed go out somewhere, they always come back with some news or some sort of partnership or something. Like, that man doesn't take trips for no reason. He goes to U.K., he comes back with a Spike TV deal. He, he, visits, uh, he visits Mexico, he comes back with uh, AAA one of the biggest, and, the biggest Mexican promotion partnership. I also, mean, also he, he came back with the crash, too. He, he came back with crash, too, exactly. Uh, every time Double J and uh, Big Ed hit the road, they always come back with some good news. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Jeff heading out to L.A. We'll see what he comes back with because he always does come back with something. Uh, it's being reported on multiple uh, wrestling sites, even the more credible ones like PW Insider that Spike UK is thrilled, keyword thrilled, with the initial ratings for Impact thus far. Good news, definitely good that they're not starting off to a rocky relationship. Uh, now that the Dixie regime is out of power, you're going to, a lot, a lot of smooth sailing so far, man. You know, I, I at first, I wasn't going to just act like everything was, you know, you know, our prayers have been answered, everything's perfect, but God damn, man, everything's, everything's pretty damn near perfect. Things are working out good. Uh, we took some L's. Uh, you know, I, I relate wrestling to, like, sports teams, you know. there's uh, There was some roster trade. Some guys left the team. Uh, but a lot of new guys came came to the team. A lot of rookies, uh, some legends. Uh, just things, things are shaping up. Uh, before we finish up with the news, uh, just a reminder, there's plenty of cool Impact videos to check out on Impact's YouTube channel, or you can go to impactwrestling.com. They're always linked on there. Uh, 
you got uh they put out a video uh Eddie Edwards uh with his knee surgery. This this new series, uh I forget what it's called, uh they got one with Braxton Sutter and Angelina Love. Then there's the recurring favorites such as Around the Ring. I think this week had DJ Z. And then uh the question mark where they always ask the wrestlers these random questions, uh the question mark was the worst date experience. Chef, I I'm gonna stop real quick before we move into the episode. Uh I'll I'll hit you with one, but I gotta ask you first, man. I mean, they asked the wrestlers. I want to ask my fellow podcasters. What was your worst date experience? If you could take us back to Young Chef. Ah uh, man, see, I got a real nasty one that I'm not gonna say because come I don't want to shit. Come on, come on. We're on the hit. No today, way. Okay? No We're way. No way. Mine is no gonna be way. totally more embarrassing. Come on. No, no way. Because this is just fucked up. So I'm not gonna go with that one. The worst one. All right, it's probably I was like 14. I was dating this girl. Uh, she lived on Dittmar's and shit, right? It was her birthday. You... I mean, it was, a great, it was a great day for me. I don't have bad dates, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not trying to act like a dick or the man, but listen, fucking Chef was the pimp, and anyone who knows me back then, they could co-sign on it. They'll be like, yeah, this nigga was a mad chick. But so I'm dating this one chick. You know, we go see, I don't remember what fucking movie. We're, out, we're on Steinway Street. And I'm just, it's me and, like, five of her homegirls, right? One of them was looking seriously good. You know, the girl I was with looked good, too, but the other girl looked right. So we go back to dip malls and shit. I start shooting around, fucking around, chilling with the girls, you know, you know, acting like fucking, you know, like with that smooth staccato shit. You know, I go back, I walk the girl home because the other girl tells me, she's like, hey, after you drop her off, yo, come, come see me in my crib. Like, come through my window. So I'm like, I bet. Wait, wait, hold, hold on a second, Chef. Pause, pause, pause. Stop the clock. Stop huh. the clock. Why were you with two chicks? Were you were you hanging out with two chicks, or was one of your no, no, I was with, it was with I was with five girls and the one girl. We went to a movie. Wait, you took out five girls on a date? No, 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 no. I was dating one, right? Okay. It was her birthday, so she had oh her a bunch friends. of her friends. She brought a bunch. Okay, yeah, yeah, I thought yeah. yo, I thought some sort of like crazy like six you Hefner shit like. Chef pulls up in a minivan and, like, five birds hop out. Nah, nah, nah. Nah, nah. Like, so it's five chicks. You know, I'm at the movie and shit. You know, we, like I said, we go hang out. While I'm shooting around, one of them is like, yo, after you walk her home, yo, come, you know, slide through my crib, come through my window. So I'm like, all right, no doubt. So I tell the shorty, yo, I'm going to you later. I got a fucking headache, you know, blah, 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 blah. It's her birthday. So I felt a little bad, but the other shorty was bad. So... It was a date, so I guess I'm going to go with that one because I smashed out her best friend. So, you know, it is what it is. Sometimes you got to be a scumbag. That poo dang. That's fucked up, so what, Jeff. That's fucked up. You, you, you take her out on a date for her birthday. No, no, no. It no, was she her birthday, Jeff. She paid, though. She paid. She, wait. It was her birthday. She paid for everything, and then you went and fucked one of her friends at the end of the night. Her oh, best yeah. friend, that her best friend that was at her wedding like five years ago. Oh man, pimp daddy chef. Oh, I mean, see that's but that's not like I mean that's bad on her part, like at her expense. But that 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 could be a victory. It all depends how you look at it. It's like oh, chef was being a scumbag, or was it a victory? I don't know, but. I mean, that's not horrible. I, I would rather hear the other story. I, There's I'm gonna have no to, like, way. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to have to like, ask you off the air or something. But yo, my yo, worst off, date experience. Oh, all right. What do you got? No, no, I was just going to say, off air, I'm going to put it out there because it's so fucked up that if I say it, it's definitely going to. Yo, dude, I haven't seen this chick in, like, fucking 17 years. But no, somehow, no. like, and, you know, we still cool. You know, I don't, I don't fuck with her like that. We are all right, but. It's so embarrassing for Shorty that it's one of the funniest things that I've ever witnessed, and my man was sitting there that I wouldn't want her to hurt herself because it's publicly out there. Oh, man, dude, were you were you fucking her in the ass and she, like, shit all over the bed and you packed? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's disgusting. I'm sorry. That, no, that, the, the sweat is trickling down John's face right now. He just read that part. Oh, no. They're starting. Oh, no. You know, all right. Before we move on, let me hit you, let me hit you with my worst date experience uh, before we move on to the episode. Uh, mine is horrible. It's so embarrassing. But 
really not many people from my own personal life listen to this. This is for our Impact fans, and we love to entertain them. So this is my worst date experience. Uh, also, please, in the comments, give us your worst date experience because I want to hear our listeners. Cause we're putting it out there. You might as well, too. You know, we show us ours. You sh- the show is yours, something like that. So my worst date experience, uh, I'm like – I'm in like the, the probably the the seventh grade, maybe the eighth grade. Uh, this girl I've always had a crush on for years, man, and like I I started to break out of the friend zone. You have you know what that's like, chef breaking out of the friend zone. It's not easy. Not everybody gets to do that. Somehow you know you know what? To be honest, like I wasn't in that friend zone for more than like a day or two, brother. Oh, you motherfucker, man. You grew up in the hood, man. You guys are fucking at like 12 in the hood. I didn't grow up in the hood, all right? <laughs> you, guys, you, guys, you guys are drinking and fucking at like 12 years old in the hood. I, I, I'm from the nice suburbs. We, we, you know, we, a lot of people you know, weren't... Uh, yo, <laughs> you're 100% right, because at 12 years old, I lost my virginity. At 12 years old, I was drinking and smoking already. Oh, man. Well, all right. Well, you just you helped me out. You said the word virginity. Uh this story involves that, and it's real bad. So, my, I finally break out of the friend zone with this girl. Um, things are, like, moving along. We're hanging out. We start, like, making out and stuff. And I'm, like, dude, I'm, like, 14 years old. Uh, we start making out and stuff. Things start, you know, like, things are blossoming. And I take her out on a date. We go out. Good night, you know. Movies, something like that. Probably went to friendlies. Uh. Only, like, my real New Yorkers know what that is. It's a little kid spot out here in New York. Friendlies. Probably took her to Friendlies. And uh, so I bring her back to the crib. And uh, I get her in my room alone. Things are, you know, we're we're having some adult time, like, getting to that point. And uh, so I, you know, I I wrap up old Jimmy. I enter the ring. You know, I enter the rumble. Squash match, Chef. We're talking like <laughs> Congo Kong versus that dude in the episode. You know, total squash match. I'm talking like three three seconds maybe, and that's me being generous. Totally embarrassing, man. Everything. I, I had lived for years dreaming about this girl. I worked like so hard to finally get her to like me. I get her in the moment, man. And I blow the load in two seconds, and that 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 was that was my first experience with sex. That's devastating, you, Chef. That fucked you know, me up. You know, you know what? Though to keep it one hundred, though, we all went through that. You know what I mean? So anybody, you, you that, did. Wait, you did? That's a normal thing because I, it, that that messed up my confidence for a couple of years. I wasn't I wasn't hitting any tanks for like a solid two to three years after that. All right, fucked me up. Like, with with my experience, and it's a good thing I could talk like this because, you know, I damn sure don't be having my kids listen to this, so I can say whatever <laughs> I want. <laughs> the dean's you know, the dean's office. You know what I mean? Exactly. You know what I mean? I can say whatever I want. Like, the first time I had lost mine, and I'm not trying to make this like some kind of fucking, you know, therapy for virgins that, you know, lose it. But um, it was this hot chick. She was three years older than me. And um, some one of my friends, it was her shorty, and, you know, he was like, yo, for your birthday, he was an older cat, so he was like, yo, for your birthday, you know, go in the bathroom, I got something for you, and I'm like, oh, you know, that, that's the I, hood, man, we, we don't have any of that in the suburbs, hooking each other you, up, that's only in the hood. You know, so I'm 12 years old, I don't know nothing, I'm still, you know, I'm walking out the house with the fucking, you know, backwards New York Knicks hat, not a Knicks fan with the basketball thing, and I'm fucking, you know, Michael Jordan AI type shit, you know, so I'm walking in there like, dude, yeah, nigga, I'm hanging out with these old school, you know, the older cats, blah, blah, blah. I walk in this shorty's buck naked, and I'm like, whoa. Like, you know, my eyes open up like they fucking seen a UFO or something. I'm like, oh, shit. And she's like, like yo. It, it, in TV when they open up the treasure chest, and it's like, oh, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so she tells me, yo, she goes, sit down. I'm going to take care of you. Yo, my nigga, I don't know how many strokes I was in, but she didn't even get started yet. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like there's no way shorty was even wet. You know what I mean? Like, so. I was like, I was, yo, dude, it was over for me before it even started. So if someone's going to sit here and lie and be like, man, I was all up in there all night, stop lying. Like, you're a liar. Don't lie. We all go through this shit. We all put, yo, dude, 
you get so excited, your AK just starts shooting. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> <laughs> unless you got that hurl stamina, man, he'd be he be doing that stamina training all day long. I mean, he might have been a veteran. You, know, you never know. He might have been also Ron Jeremy training. <laughs> but all right, well that 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 wraps up our uh, talk sex with Kyle and Chef segment. Uh, just wanted to capitalize on this week's question mark worst date experience up there on the Impact YouTube. So usually at this point we do the shout outs, but I wasn't expecting to be the host today. Blame Hurls for that. So uh, really don't have anything set up for shout outs. Just I'll just pull it out my ass real quick. Uh, Head on down to impactasylum.net for all the fun, <laughs> as per usual. Uh, shout out to all of our listeners. Uh, Robert does wrestling. That That's our dude right there. Uh, follow the Daily Impact on Instagram. A really cool dude runs that. It's uh, Impact <laughs> Wrestling fan page. Uh, follow my dudes over at King of the Mountain podcast. And, Chef, are you still running the Mafia page on Facebook? Yes, I am. Awesome, awesome. Is is uh is it still TNA Mafia, or did you switch to Impact Mafia? No, no, no. I should have been say TNA Mafia. I'm not, not switching that Impact shit. Keep, keeping it a buck. It's, it's it's still TNA Mafia. So, yeah, uh, those, those that's my schlep shout-outs, because I wasn't ready for any of that. So, uh I mean, unless, Hurls, you want to, like, cut this out and re-record your voice or something, do a shout-out, you fucking left us, you fucking asshole. You're, you're like, you're a deadbeat <laughs> podcaster, Hurls, and you're a deadbeat Ooh. sportsman. You are a deadbeat team player. Your softball team was going to win. You were supposed to take them to the top, and you, you had no confidence. But I, I bet you, I bet you Hurls had nothing to do with the victory. No, no way. You know what? Hurls, it's probably because of Hurls they even kept it close. You know, like, it should have been, like, Hurls' team blowing out the other team because of Hurls. It might have been closer than that. <laughs> like, Hurls probably, play, Hurls probably plays on a team like the New York Yankees right now that are hot as the fuck. And then, like, you know, he comes, and all of a sudden they're, like, fucking, you know, like the worst team in the league. And they're like, yo, Hurls, you know, they, they're his friends. So they're probably like, hey, yeah, 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 come to games at, like, 830. You know, and, and the game's really at, like, 7, but for some reason, Hurl shows up at, like, 6.30, you know, ready for BP. <laughs> no, no, dude, Hurl doesn't show up at 6.30. Hurl shows up at fucking 10.15. <laughs> but, all right, so, enough beating on the old buddy. Hurl's the thing of fat style. Move on to the episode, uh... Show opens up with a video package highlighting last week as usual. Reborn Matt Seidel makes his I do I, I like his theme song. It gives you a good uh you know, it's just like this this really refreshing like I don't know, you, you catch that theme song live in the impact zone, it's it's not it's not something regular. It's like it, it is a special vibe to that song. It's like, Oh man, this guy's here. He's entered the building, he's about to do a bunch of backflips. <laughs> Dude. We don't get no music at the Impact Zone. We get, like, you know, we get, like, a random song, you know, just warming up the crowd just to get wild, you know. It might be even something like a Charlie Poof or something, you know, like something the girls like or something. We don't get no Impact music. <laughs> no, I'm talking about Matt Seidel's theme song, right? That's oh, my fault, my fault, my fault, my fault, yeah. yeah no. well, I, I, that shit was all right. Sorry. Uh, it's got a cool, cool vibe to it, so. We get Eddie Edwards with Alicia versus Reborn Matt Seidel. Hell of a match. Real hell of a match. Uh, I don't even know where to start. Uh, just some real hard-hitting, uh, super athletic wrestling. Uh, just two of the best in the business today doing it only like they can. That shot of caffeine, just like Pope says in every Eddie Edwards match. He, Eddie brought the shot of caffeine. Seidel, he, he brought it. So, Seidel uh, hits the uh, shooting star press for the three count at the end. And uh, like good sportsmen, not you, Hurls, like good sportsmen, they shake hands after the match. And then, Davey Richards with a steel chair. And Angelina Love 
come and give him the old beat down. Uh, Chef, were you uh, in the zone for this match? Absolutely. This, yo, I keep, I kept telling people like this. Every, every taping, I, I get fired up about one match, and this was it. You know, um, you know, I've been on record to to heckle. You know, Eddie Edwards a lot. I do it there all the time. You know, it, it's fun. You know, whatever. But every time that there was like a, a, a two count that I was like, oh, the match is, you know, Eddie Edwards about to win. Then, oh, Matt Seidel's about to win. Oh, Eddie Edwards. Like, the way it was done was so fucking badass. Like, these guys, like that old school phrase, they went to war. You know what I mean? Like, and every time you thought one of them got the upper hand, the motherfucker would kick out. You know, it was, dude, this was like oh, a that's, match. That's a good match. That's a good match. Yeah. When you're on the edge yeah. of your seat, and you don't know. What's exactly. Gonna and. And the, the, the thing that I keep trying to say is I come off very anti-Eddie Edwards. I mean, look, the guy's a fucking amazing talent. Let, let me just, you know, clear the air for the millionth time. He's an amazing ta- talent. Um, I just like to, you know, I like to fuck with the fans that are there. You know, I like to, you know, I, I like piss people off at times. So, heel team yo, six. yeah, you know what I mean? I'm just being a fucking heel. Heel team six all day. So, to watch him do his thing. And to start, actually, at, at times, I was like, oh, shit, like, oh, that was crazy. Like, you know, I started actually looking at Eddie Edwards, like, yo, you know, I'm about to, you know, go buck as if this dude really pins him right now. And then they'll kick out, like, yo. And then for them to shake hands, as much as I don't like that, after that match, that shit was perfect. And then Davey Richards comes down, pummels him, and I'm like, ha, my heel side comes out again because I really enjoyed watching Davey whoop his ass. You know, some people – like heckling wrestlers, other people like laying down in ice cream freezers. Chef, Chef <laughs> has some fun out there, but when when it all well, at the end of the day, Chef gives respect where respect is due. That's why that's why I like you, Chef. You know, you might mess around, you know, goofing on Eddie a lot, but when it comes down to it, you say, okay, that was an awesome match. Oh yeah, I mean, yo, dude, there's been a few matches for the last few tapings that he had great matches. That as soon as those, you know, I can't, I can't say nothing because I don't want to spoil nothing. So I wait until the match is over and I'm like, yo, Eddie, you know, that was a fucking dope match. Much respect. And he knows what it is. Like, you know, dude, I've heckled him so much that he's been so classy about things that if I say something positive, he gets it. You know what I mean? He's like, oh, this guy's just being a dick. You know, but it's all fun and games because I'm the first motherfucker to be like, yo, Eddie, you put the fucking business out there. And this match got uh, this is awesome chant. And the this is awesome chant. That actually means something when you watch Impact because you don't get them all the time. Like, the Impact fans in the Impact Zone, they don't chant this is awesome unless something is truly awesome. Like, I can think of some other wrestling shows, like especially NXT. Dude, I can't watch NXT because the crowd is, like, they're, dude, they're too alive. Like, there's, there's, like, the guys are standing in the ring and they're chanting this is awesome before they even lock up. Like, you guys are geeks, man. Just Shut up. Impact, when there's a This Is Awesome chant, it was well-deserved. So, total, total five-star, five-star match, God damn it, five-star match. If you didn't catch this match, go back and watch it. Totally amazing. I'll, I'll be, this is, at the end of the year, this is going to be one of those top matches we're voting on. So, moving on, Mackenzie Mitchell. Ooh, I, I like me some Mackenzie Mitchell. Mackenzie Mitchell is backstage interviewing Magnus. Uh, Magnus says he doesn't like how Impact set up Alberto as a roadblock in his way. Magnus is flexing with the GFW Global Championship. Uh, Matt Morgan shows up. Matt Morgan's in his face. Then uh, Bruce Pritchard gets in the way, uh, setting, setting the match up for tonight. Pritchard says uh, Magnus's GFW title and global title will be on the line. Pritchard tells Magnus to go get his wrestling gear for that match. So these two setting up for later on in the show. And then uh, when the show comes back from the break, we get uh, <laughs> another one of these KM segments. Uh, this time KM is uh, he's littering, giving the janitor a hard time gets in the janitor's face and uses the line from last week telling him to uh, make it like a tree and get out of here. I, I think it's supposed to be make like a tree and split, but uh, make like a tree and get out of here. Uh, channeling Biff. You remember Biff from Back to the Future? Absolutely. Like okay. I was saying on the, on the last podcast, exactly. that's what my wife was calling him before these things. He's Biff. 
Kay and his Biff. Uh, David Penzer, uh, WCW announcer, he's back with Impact. Uh, he's back in place of Spud, who was uh, taken down at the hands of Swaggle and a hammer last week. Uh, M- Matthew actually mocks Pezner, uh, Pe- Pezner, <laughs> friends of those toys, the, the Pez, the little pinky candies in them. Matthew mocks <laughs> Penzer, Penzer as being a relic who he <laughs> – who he has blocked on Twitter in the past. Dude, Matthews is a douchebag, man. Fucking asshole. Josh Matthews. I can't stand him throughout the episode. He's just... This guy This guy wishes he was like Bobby the Brain Keenan. He's the, the goat. Uh, free JB, right, Chef? Free JB? Free JB. It's always, it's always free JB. Always free JB. Free JB, you know? We got to get those shirts in the hood. Free JB. Yay, yay. <laughs> yay, yay. So, uh, Deanna attacks uh, Christina Von Erie right at the bell. Moving along, we get that impact, impact knockout, some action. No divas up in here. Impact's action. Deanna versus Christina Von Erie for her uh, GFW Women's Championship. And like I just said, right at the bell, uh, the taxer, Deanna, controls the early portion of the match until uh, Erie starts uh, with that high knee. Her momentum is cut short by a big boot by Sienna. This is back and forth, man. Uh, great, great action. Uh, Sienna ends up taking that GFW Women's Championship at the end of the match, which I, I didn't really see coming, so really no build here, but uh, it's good to see uh, Sienna take that title because when the new regime came in, you knew there were going to be a lot of changes. You know, they were hitting that refresh button. A lot of guys were going to leave. Guys and girls, sorry. That, I can't just say guys. I got to, I got to fix that, uh, that, my lingo. A lot of guys and girls were leaving. But uh, this right here just kind of lets me know, like, well, I mean, they put Sienna uh, with KM right when they brought him in. Uh, it just shows her that they have plans for her. She's in the mix. They're not going to cast her aside. She's the GFW women's title hitting that AK-47. Well, the silencer hitting that hitting that silencer for the pin. Uh, good match here. You got anything on it, Chef? Yeah, I mean, like uh, I was actually talking with one of my homegirls from the Impact Zone. She's like my sister, Christy. She, yo, dude, if there's anybody who loves Impact more than any of us, it's her. And she knows the indie scene is something crazy. And she had said, because you know, I was kind of like, yeah, Sienna's my girl. You know, you know, I'm glad she beat this chick up. But she was telling me something, and I remember watching things that she was like, they really didn't let Christina Von Erie kind of showcase herself. Mm. And once she said that, I was like, oh, man, that's right. Like, yeah, I'm, you know, I was super excited that Sienna won. But in the same respect, I was like, damn, you know what? For, like, fans that don't know who she is, they might have wanted, you know, instead of Sienna just running through her, you know, let her showcase a little bit so we have something to to gauge her on, you know? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I know what you're saying there. Like, they brought her right in and, like, you know, put her right on her back. Uh, they, they could have definitely introduced her a little better. But, uh, hey, man, Sienna better watch her back because, uh, you know, Christina Von Erie is rolling with that punk rock gang, them Reno scum boys. So, Sienna, Sienna and KM better watch watch their back. You never know when them oi, oi, oi punk rockers are going to come through and come get that belt back. So, moving along. Bruce Pritchard is backstage, and he gets confronted by Eli Drake. Drake complains about the current standing with the company, and then he insults Matt Moron and Alberto. Drake wants to make a statement by going after Alberto. Bruce tells him that he doesn't need to look for him because he's here now. Drake turns around, Alberto's standing there. Um, so... Tonight's main event gets booked right there. Drake versus Alberto with the GFW title shot against Magnus on the line, setting up the main event. Moving along there, uh, <coughs> Josh and Pope pretty much reset the show, and then in the background you see a giant sign that says Brutal AF, an arrow pointing, pointing right downwards at Matthew's head at his brutal, brutal as fuck commentary skills because you suck Matthews we can't stand you <laughs> so JB's JB's in the crowd he's uh he's hanging with the impact zone he's suspended but he's got his free ticket free ticket by the way if you're in the impact uh if you're in the Orlando area 
Action Pack tickets are always free. JB's hanging there with the, the Heel Team 6, little chef's people. He brought his signs. <laughs> Pretty funny to see that. Uh, Chef, did you uh, did you were you rubbing shoulders with JB when he was in the crowd at all? Were you standing here? Look, you know what's crazy? This is no bullshit. Like I got it. Someone's got to tweet this out because he was literally talking. Just walk up and shook my hand like, "What's up?" Because you know I, I say "What's up" to him all the time. So I was like, "Oh, that's yeah. what's up." That's not that's not even the funny part that he walked up and dapped me up real quick. Like when he was in the crowd, he's right by my mom's. My mom starts marking out. She loves JB. You know she's not out here like that. She's like, oh, man, JB was chilling by me. You know, he's all about. I was like, oh, my mom was getting all ghetto, all bugged out. I was like, this is crazy. So your mom was loving the impact zone. I know you brought my Dukes out. Real quick, away from the episode, I know you brought my Dukes out to the zone. Uh, she was having fun loving the show. Oh, my God. Yo, she actually, like, she actually got KM to turn around and talk shit to her, and she was talking shit back. Yo, it was fucking hilarious. My mom was taking shots at people. But, yo, my mom is kind of G'd up. She's from the South Bronx. You know, she's so. heel team six. She, she's repping the heel team six. Yeah, she, she was rocking the heel team six shirt. Yo, at one point she threw up the heel team six side, which is five fingers, and then the middle finger on the other side, she's throwing it up. Yo, it was hilarious. Oh, man, that's great. Uh, so did she watch the show on TV? Like, or was that her first experience, like, seeing Impact Wrestling? Oh, no, no. She, she flew up. Uh, she actually, her first time she was out here was for when uh, Moose's debut. Nice. Oh, dude, so, that was uh, Destination X last year. Yeah, she was out here. She had flew down. She was out here for like, uh, I think, nine days, and she went to all the tapings. But the day he debuted, she caught like two fucking shirts they threw into the crowd. She caught a white one. She got like half the roster of signs. She got Moose that night. So she was all like, oh, shit. Like, you know, she didn't even know who the fuck Moose was. Just a big, big dude. And she was all, you know, she marked out since that day she's watched fucking TNA religiously. She calls me up every Friday morning. Yo, did you watch TNA? I'm like, yo, Ma, I go there. I know what happened. <laughs> I'm on the episode, Ma. Yeah. You're still playing the same like, video footage of me from three years ago. <laughs> exactly. You know, like, come on, man. So, back to the episode. Mackenzie Mitchell is backstage after the break. She uh, She brings in Karen Jarrett. Karen announces that Eddie Edwards' wife, Alicia, will make her Impact Wrestling debut next week against Angelina Love. Sienna shows up with her newly won GFW title, and she gets in Karen's face. Karen says that Sienna shouldn't be too cocky because there are a line of women waiting to take that title away from her. Man, I, you know, dude, I, I try, uh, I'm trying to accept Karen. Like, I'm still kind of annoyed that she's on the show. Just to, I don't know, man. I don't, you know, just... Last week I was joking around making that voice when I was like, Jeff, Jeff, I want the hotel room with the jacuzzi in it. But, you know, like, I, I, I goof on her a little, but it's just like, man, I, she's, I think her acting is the shits. I I understand, you know, Jeff's putting his wife on TV, you know, it's, but it's just kind of like, I feel like they could, they could have somebody else uh, a little better than her, but... Let's give her some time. I don't want to just, you know, beat on her. But, like, I feel like right off the bat, all of us, well, not really you. You were cool with her. But most of us were just uh, just shitting on her, you know. I, but I don't know. I'm, I'm really in, in between about her. You know, some days I'm like, ah, cool, Karen. Other days I'm like, Jeff, Jeff, I want to be on the wrestling show. <laughs> you know what it is? Jeff, I I'm think qualified. That... I fucked your I think... ankle. I should be on the wrestling show. <laughs> wow. No, I don't see it I don't see it that way, but like you know, I think you know, first of all, she's been with, with uh Double J for mad years, you know, so she's been a part of Impact. To me she is someone I that a lot of wrestlers. <laughs> Holy shit, bro. <laughs> uh, you know what, I'm off of this subject. Alright, so so maybe so Karen let's see and know is you know don't be too cocky there. There are a lot of a lot of knockouts. Well, she didn't say knockouts. She said women. A lot of women waiting to take that title away from her. Yeah, do you think they should keep the name knockouts while they're they're refreshing a lot of stuff, or do you think they should switch to women, or do you think they should keep knockouts? How do you feel about that? Nah, real nah, quick? nah, nah, no way. I like the name knockouts. I mean, you know, it's old school. They're knockouts. They're hot chicks, but they can knock you out. That's what I always thought a knockout was. They knock super you out. That can knock you out. You know, if I I kind of dig that. They're not some you know, prissy little Barbie divas. That's what's up. That's what's up. So, next up, we get uh, EC3 
squashing a guy by the name of hold on, I have I have this this Jabba this Jabba's name in my notes somewhere. Josh Bolin. EC three squashes Josh Bolin. Very very brief. Uh, Carter just dominates this this poor little guy. Uh, TK three knee to the head one percenter. Bada bing bada boom. Uh, this you know. They say we're getting the old EC3 again, and uh, this kind of like there was this this match right here is just it wasn't for nothing. It wasn't just a squash. Uh, EC3's breakout moment was when he uh, he was at Pound for Glory. Uh, I think it was 2013, and he squashed. Uh, dude, what what was that guy's name, man? Do you remember that Impact Jobber? Uh, like Norm? oh, oh Norm Burnham. Norm Furnham, yeah, he, he squashed <laughs> Norm Furnham. Uh, and I, this was kind of like just like a like a flashback to that match, and it's almost like you know the old EC3 is uh, you know he's got his shit together. He's 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 back to the EC3 that uh, that won championships. The the other EC3, Mister Nice Guy, his career wasn't uh, going where he wanted to go. So he's back to the old EC3, and this squash match just kind of like it was kind of like a flashback to, to the uh, what was his name, Chef? Norm Furnham. What was it? Norm Furnham, the Norm Furnham match. Um, so EC3 squashes him real quick, then he gets on the mic and he uh, he cuts a promo. He calls out Impact Managing Management and promises to become the three-time world champion at Slammiversary. Then back at ringside, the camera cuts to Matthews and Pope at the broadcast table. This time, JB holds up a sign that says POS, piece of shit, in case you don't know what that means. I'd be surprised if you don't. Or hit up for Josh's head. Uh, Borash flips the sign and then it reads hashtag free JB. Matthews notices all this but tries to brush it off. After hyping the Magnus and Morgan match, Matthews gets annoyed and calls for management to remove Borash from ringside. Oh, man, so then we get a little uh, video package uh, just uh, giving you uh, the history of Morgan and Magnus and the company. Uh, Hell of a match here, man. Uh, I really like uh, Impact. Uh, They're bringing back heavyweight wrestling. Uh, A lot of companies are going with the little guys. Uh, You're seeing a lot of the little guys uh, getting shine and – they're kind of losing track of the heavyweights, but Impact is definitely uh, putting heavyweight wrestling at the forefront, and this match is a great example of it. Uh, How did you feel about this match right here, Chef? I thought it was an amazing match. See, but And it, not to try to go off what we're talking about, but like, if you really look at what Impact is doing, yeah, they're really taking care of the heavyweights, but at the same time, they're tailoring into their tag team division as well as the X division. Like they really seem like they're getting on a really good balance of, of solid wrestling all around. So oh, versatility. They're, they're being versatile. Uh, they're, they're not like one thing that they suffered from throughout the years. Like one thing would be really good. Like, uh, oh man, are you seeing EC3 skill title run? But then in the same breath, the X Division's doing nothing. Like they would focus on one thing, then lose track of other things. They're finally balancing out the show, and it, it's looking real good. Uh, two. To uh, the Blueprint, Matt Morgan, uh, great to see him tearing it up. Uh, he's somebody that I wasn't expecting to come back into the company. Uh, Magnus, I was never a huge fan of Magnus, but I respect him. This was a hell of a match right here. Uh, being there in the impact zone, uh, how was the crowd for this one? Were they into this one? Yeah, they were into it. Honestly, like I hear a lot of people say it was good or bad. I would. I thought the match was okay. Like I wasn't super amped up at the end. I was like, "All right, you know, I, you know, I, all right, fine. He won. You know, I was cool with Magnus winning, but like, it really didn't. There was a lot of really good matches. And if you look at, we started off with Eddie Edwards, and I know it's a great way to start off a show. But if you look at that match, that match literally should have been the main event. Yeah, it had no kind of belt on the line or no kind of, you know stipulation but that match was so fucking dope that to me i think that should have been the the main event because like i said i thought it was the best of all of it and uh matt Matt morgan love him glad he's back i like magnus you know so i I thought it was okay and the only thing i want to say is i would really like fucking 
Magnus to get back with Bram. I think that would help both of them out. You know, I'm not trying to once again, you know, throw my own two sh- fucking cents out there just for shits and giggles, but I think right now with them not really know where they're going to go with Brand, they don't, you know, Magnus, where do you see him? I think if you put both of them together, that's another group that can battle VOW. That's another group that can go against LAX, you know, but whatever. So what I got from this match, uh, Magnus delivering that low blow to Morgan when the ref had his back turned, and then he hits uh, the Michinoku driver and uh, defeats him with that top rope elbow. Just kind of let me know uh, Magnus is uh, not good, not really a baby face. He's hitting low blows. Uh, you know, and you mentioned Bram. Uh, I would like to see Bram come back in as a heel, and uh, you're right, putting him and Magnus together uh, again. They they have such a, a history, and they're the type of talent that, you know, really, really complement each other. A lot of chemistry there. Good call there, Chef. Uh, so, yeah, uh, Magnus Magnus defeats Morgan with that uh, top rope elbow. Then uh show comes back from the break. Mackenzie Mitchell interviews the current Impact World Champion, Bobby Lashley. He lists off all the people he's beaten and says that he is the real world champion. And back at ringside, Borash has a fan holding up one of his signs. Matthews mocks Borash for making the signs. Uh, the, the, the Borash and uh, Matthews thing, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's entertaining, but I, I, I think they're kind of dragging it out. I kind of want to get a payoff. You know, I don't want to see this, this uh, Tom and Jerry cat and mouse uh, throughout every episode. So moving along. The uh, LAX in the clubhouse, LAX vignette. Uh, Conan addresses the LAX team uh, about last week's street fight. Uh, they they give a moment of silence to the fallen Decay, and then they all just start laughing. Uh, Decay is done. Conan says that they're going to have a funeral for Decay next week. Without spoiling, Chef, uh, are we in for a treat for this Decay funeral? Fuck yeah, you're in for a treat. Like, yo, dude. It was one of those things that I didn't know what to expect. I seen what was in the ring, so I was like, okay, this is this is weird. I seen where they come out, so I knew they were coming out. And the music is not their typical music. It was some pretty gangster shit. And I was like, oh, these motherfuckers did not just come out like this. It was fucking dope. And I can't wait for the next podcast so I could really throw my reference in there because if I throw it in there, Real hip hop heads that listen to this are going to be like, "Oh, bang! I know exactly what Chef is talking about." So I can't do that. But um, we're in for a treat. Yo, bottom line, we're in for a treat. Yo, this is going to be gangster, like, and I mean, like, this is really. I don't know who came up with this. It had to be fucking Conan throwing it out there because there's no way anybody in the back scenes knows what this is about. Oh man! So moving along, uh. Quick little James Storm promo. Uh, they, these little like profile pieces. They've uh, they've been airing throughout the show. Uh, I don't think I covered all of them because they're kind of morally commercials. But uh, quick James Storm. He talks about what Impact Wrestling means to him and why he's a wrestler. He lists his family as the reason why he wrestles and states that Impact Wrestling is life to him. After the break, oh, dude, this was hilarious. Uh, they end this video of Spud, who's recovering from his attack by Swaggle last week. And Spud's got the neck break, uh, neck breaker on. Uh, neck breaker. He's got the neck brace on. He's in a sling. Uh, he says that he's got to take painkillers just to go to the bathroom. Uh, there's a picture of Swaggle next to his bedside. I, dude, it was just so funny. Like, I, basically, like I think they just. Uh, to make us laugh, like they kind of just like they goofed on wrestling, basically. Like you know, like at the end of the day, like all this wrestling stuff, like sometimes like the, the TV show, like it's like they just like goofing on themselves. You know what I mean? Like a wrestling feud. Like this is like a tongue-in-cheek like execution of a wrestling feud. Like it, it's it's clearly supposed to be some comic relief, but the the way they shot it, like how it was all sad and like. But, I, dude, I, were you into this, or did you think it was stupid? No, no, no. I thought it was hilarious. Like, I, I crazy enjoyed it. I thought it was, <laughs> yo, dude, like, to me, it felt like one of these cheesy daytime soap operas. Yeah, that was the point. It was hilarious. Like, <laughs> it was cheesier than one of those pop TV impact commercials. And I love impact on pop TV. But you know what I'm talking about with the commercials, man? 
whoever's like the marketing director at Pop TV, they need to figure out how to make better commercials. Do you have any idea what I'm talking about right now? Absolutely. Yeah, those Pop TV commercials, like, there'll be one of, like, somebody, like, swinging a chair, and it'll be like, oh, look at uh, Bram playing the drums. <laughs> like, I'm putting sound effects in there. Like, all the listeners know exactly what I'm talking about. Like, this was just such a cheesy video. Uh, at the very end, I think it ends with Spud saying that he never meant to pull Swaggle's pants down. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, man, just funny stuff, man. Spud is, like... He he's so talented. Uh, he he he'll make you laugh, man. He'll make you cry. He, Spud is he, but when he wants to, man, he's a total comedian. Speaking of making you laugh, this guy is hilarious. Uh, yo, so yo, on. today today he did, and I'm gonna make this quick. Today he did this thing on on uh, I think it was the Impact Wrestling on Facebook, where he was like, you know, addressing the fans, and he was like, it takes me three pills in the morning just so I could tinkle just a little bit of pee. <laughs> Yo, just the shit he says is fucking crazy. Oh man, that's that's hilarious. Uh just moving along here, uh getting towards the end. Uh moving along, uh Congo Kong with L V N versus uh Jabber by the name of William Weeks. Another squash match. Uh somebody online made a good uh point here and I wasn't even thinking about it. All right, this guy that Kong squashed William Weeks, it, was he not the janitor in the KM video earlier in the episode? I didn't catch that. I have to go back and look at this guy's face, but a bunch of people online were saying this guy that Kong squashed was the janitor from the KM segment earlier in the episode. That's pretty funny. Uh, Chef, do you think that's accurate or not? You know what? I have no fucking idea now. Like when I go home, I'm, I'm you know I gotta look back at it because I, I don't. Yo, dude, but this guy looks fucking like. I mean, I don't want to diss the guy. You know, he's a professional wrestler, or whatever, whoever he is. But like, he looks like a, a, a really super low budget uh, uh, Shaggy from fucking Scooby Doo. <laughs> yeah, dude, he, he looks like somebody that I bought weed off of before. <laughs> weeks weeks looks like the janitor guy from earlier with KM. Uh, he he seems like he's more freaked out than by Laurel than Khan. But when Laurel approaches him, he backs off and uh, she, she sticks she sticks the dog on him. Congo said, "The man, you feel bad for him, man." Congo just destroying this guy. Total destruction kills him. Uh, then Braxton and Allie make their way down the ramp. Sutter runs into the ring and goes after Congo. Uh, hits him with the hits him with the clothesline over the top rope. But Congo lands on his feet. Holy shit! Lands on his feet. Laurel gets her monster to leave ringside. Uh, quick little Eli Drake uh, profile piece. Uh, one of those commercials like I was talking about before. James Storm. Uh, he cuts a promo where he's uh, he's he's actually like putting over the talent in Impact Wrestling and very unlike Eli to be humble or showing any respect in, in any episode of Impact Wrestling uh, he, uh, he, he he gives his props to the roster and maybe he's given props to his his team and like there's this Impact Bloods and then there's GFW Bloods. That's what I'm getting out of this. Um, moving along real quick before the main event uh, we get this really good video piece uh with this, with Sanjay Dutton, low key, uh, low key destroyed Sanjay's eye. Oh man, dude, I didn't even notice how nasty his eye was when I first watched the match. Then when I saw this, I got a good glimpse of his eye hanging out of the socket. That's disgusting, man. I mean, I know you've seen some pretty uh, brutal stuff out on the street, Chef, but I don't know if you've ever seen anything like this. That was disgusting the way his eye was hanging out. You know what? I've seen some crazy things that blow that shit out of the water. But sitting there, and I was really close, and at this point, me and my mom was, was by the barricade, and she was like, I wasn't even, I honestly, I didn't pay attention, and he was like not far from me. I was watching whatever was going on in the ring. And she was like, yo, um, she goes, that guy right there just got Rachmans. Remember that boxer that got punched in the face and I got fucked up? I mean, I, I, not particularly, but I, 
I'm sure that's uh, accurate. That has to. Yeah, yeah. And she's like, there was a guy named Hasim Rotman, and I think it was Holyfield pushed him so hard in the face that it just shot, like, and he had this, like, second head over his face. So as soon as she said, yo, that guy right there just got Rotman, I looked down, I was like, oh, fuck, like, damn, like, yo, dude, for him to finish that motherfucking match the way he did, yo, mad respect, because, yo, there's no way you could even see out that eyeball. You know, dude, that's funny. Uh, you just said Rockman. Uh, there, there's a camera online that I never understood. You, you remember that song, uh, him uh, and uh, when he was on Rockefeller? Like I seen Rockman, and I'm next. Exactly. Fuck with exactly. That's one of my favorites by him. Some little hip hop talk for you. Some classic Cam for all you uh, Dipset cats out there. Chef, were you fucking with Dipset in that run? Yeah, you just never saw me in pink. <laughs> But I bet you had those big throwback jerseys on, them tall jerseys. Yo, dude, I, still, tall jerseys. I, got all, I got all my 40 Deuce jerseys. I got jerseys that are from 1995 with my 40 Deuce squad all over them. I go to the oh, Impact Store rocking my 40 Deuce jerseys. Oh, man. So what I got from that vignette is, uh, you know, Sanjay is complaining like Loki tried to kill him. Loki tried to take the, the food out of his mouth out there. Loki tried to take him out the game. And, uh, Low-key, just, you know, it's just business. That's what he says. He, he calls it just business. And uh, Dutch, Dutch says that uh, he's always fallen short of being the X Division champion. I think you have a really good story to tell right there because Sanjay Dutt is looked at as an X Division veteran because he was in the company uh, at some of their, uh, just like the, 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 the peak of the X Division in like the mid-2000s, Sanjay Dutt was uh, just a player and play from him away actually uh but he never won the x division championship never and that's you know, a good story you know like and he just he just got his face splattered tells a great story because now we're going to see that uphill battle he's going to heal up his eyes going to get good and hopefully we see him get that payoff of becoming the x division champion but when you're going against low key you're going against one of the like hardest hitting just uh one of the one of the most notorious, like, notoriously physical wrestlers of all time. Like, when you see Loki in the ring, he's bashing motherfuckers in the face. And the, Sanjay Dutt's eye is proof of that. You know, it's funny because, like, Loki's from Brooklyn, and I'm not trying to make references all day, but there was a dude that I used to fuck with. His name was Kenyo. He was from Marcy Project. And he had this, like, like super, like, gangster, hard-stepping walk. And you know when Loki gets in, he does like that on the fucking the, the the ramp. How he takes that two step. Like my man used to do that. Like he used to just walk real hard body. And Loki reminds Chef and me of the boys like walking that. into the tunnel back in the day. Yo, dude, like Loki reminds me so much of that old school Brooklyn Marcy Projects. I'm a fuck you up for living type attitude. Oh, that's him, bro. That 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 that's exactly him. Uh, he's a he's a bad dude. So. I can't wait to see, uh, once Dutt heals up, I can't wait to see the classic X Division match or match-ups that they're going to deliver to us fans. Um, so moving along, main event time, Alberto El Patron versus Eli Drake. Uh, the winner of this match will go on to face Magnus for the GFW title next week. Oh, man. You know what? A little depressing because... We see Eli Drake just, like, losing so much. I, this guy is, like, every time he gets a shot, he always comes up short. And it's pretty unfortunate. But, dude, I'm an Alberto fan. Every time I see an Alberto match, I like him a little more, man. I'm, I'm, I'm on Team Alberto El Patron all the way. Uh, dude, this, this, was, this was a great match right here. Uh, you were there in the zone, Chef. Let's get your uh, exclusive take. Yo, I mean... And I'm I'm vice versa with you because remember at first I didn't even want El Patron there. No, no. Um, I am so fucking quick. By one taping, I I became a fan of this guy, and I'm not a big Eli Drake guy. I respect the shit out of him. Do I think anybody can cut a promo like Eli Drake? Probably not. Um, I like Eli Drake. I think he's entertaining. I'm just not a fan of him, so I don't give a fuck if he wins a belt or not. Does he deserve it? Yeah, whatever. But he would hit the dummy button on you for saying that. Oh, dude, he used to, and this is no bullshit, he used to hit the dummy button, and one of the people that he actually was like, oh, 
you know, you fat ass in your mama's basement was my boy Brent. So that was fucking hilarious. Like, they had, they had this whole oh, Brent fucking... Strowman? No, 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 my man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Brent Strowman. Yeah, yeah. yeah Strowman. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so, you know, I was watching this match, and I, you know, I know what Eli Drake does. I know how the motherfucker gets down. Like, this motherfucker, anytime he's in a match, you know this shit's going to be dope. Now, El Patron is another motherfucker. So these guys, yo, this match was so dope. Like, I was like, wow, this is exactly why every Eli Drake fan feels this man should be champ. Because he could put matches on like this. And at the same respect, El Patron did the same shit back. Like, these guys, they literally just showed impact management. We could be your top two guys. You know, that's how awesome this match was. Pour the house down. No, dude, it was... This is one of those special moments that I think that if they capitalize right, you got something spectacular going forward with e, uh, with EC3, with Eli Drake, with uh, El Patron. You know, I'm only going to count those three because I'm really hyped on those three right now. And the thing with, with – I'm trying to tell people because there's a few people from the Impact Zone was like, wow, why is El Patron getting all these wins? One, because he's a fucking marquee name. Anywhere El Patron goes – He's a fucking marquee guy. We love our EC3s. We love our, EC, you know, Eli Drakes and Brams and, and, you know, whoever the fuck. You can be a Tyrus fan, whatever. But these are guys that we built on a product that a lot of people ain't watching. El Patron has been watched for years. So I think if you can have a anniversary with El Patron, EC3, Eli Drake, like make it like a, a fatal four-way or something like that where – these motherfuckers could just go and give them time because you just seen what the two of these guys can do at EC3 Add Bobby Lashley. And you can have something crazy or, you know, whatever, have a one-on-one. I'm just throwing it out there because I like the four guys, but this match was so fucking spectacular that I was like, man, as a person that just finished saying, I'm not an Eli Drake fan. I understand exactly why they feel my guy should be a champ because Eli Drake, even with a loss, look fucking spectacular. This was one of those matches. You're, you're so right about that. Like, even though he lost, it's like, wow, dude, Eli Drake can go. Like, these guys throw the house down. And uh, you're saying there about uh, El Patron is just so accurate. And I want to chime in and add that a lot of times when somebody jumps ship from WWE to Impact, us most impact, us most like diehard impact fans are always hesitant because it's like, oh well, this this guy is going to come in from WWE and they're they're going to throw everything on him, and then uh, all of our homegrown, all of our our guys are going to take the back seat, so and so. But when I see Patron in the Impact six sided ring, he belongs there, man. He belongs there. He, he it's just a perfect fit. He's dude. He's great. And WWE never uh, really presented it properly, but an impact, like, oh, man, it's just, dude, Patron, like, WWE, are they morons for uh, letting this guy ever go? He's, he's, a, he's a machine. He's so athletic. He's super talented. Uh, people, He could be a heel. He could be a face. Uh, dude, this guy is just awesome. I can't, I, I'm sitting here just, uh, you know, I, I don't really mark out like that, but, man, this guy's awesome. And uh, Eli Drake is one of my favorite wrestlers, so, like, it, it's a lot for me to say, you know, when I'm comparing him to him. But Eli Drake, we love him, but it sucks. He just keeps taking L's, keep takes it, keep taking L's. Uh, I know he was up soon. I really hope that he re-signs with Impact and uh, they can build him up and, uh, you know, just – Use him to his full potential. Chef, you might disagree with that. You said you're not the uh, big fan of Eli Drake, but I'm an Eli Drake guy, but I'm also a Del Rio guy. And I'm also an EC3 guy. I can't pick somebody, Chef. I don't have, like, I can't get behind one guy right now because there's so much talent on the roster. You see, and, and that's where a little while ago I had a problem because with the Impact roster, just say over the last year and a half, I was able to say, well, this match, I'm going to go for this guy. Well, this match, I'll go for this girl. Because I really didn't care about a a, a good portion of the other, you know, the roster. I was like, eh, whatever. Um, I mean, if, and I've said this before, and I'll always say it, if Bram's in the ring, I'm going to go for Bram. 
against fucking anybody. I don't give a shit who you are. Like, if my brother's in a fucking ring against him, yo, you're about to get your ass whooped, and I'm going to sit there with a brand kill my brother sign. Um, but now, like, even when the tag team thing was, I'm a DCC fan. I'm an LAX fan. I like Reno Scum. I like Laredo Kid and Garza Jr. I fucking like Fala Ba. And fucking, and, and, you, know, and, you, don't, you don't know who to cheer. You don't know who to boo. Like, they have such a great roster right now. They're, they're underdogs. They're top dogs. They're goddamn it, Impact. You're killing it. Just, just when everybody thinks, like, oh, man, they lost the Hardys. They lost Drew Galloway. They're screwed. Dude, you, you can't kill Impact, man. You attack Impact, they always come back hitting harder than before. And, but the thing is, and once again, this is not a shot towards the Hardys. And if it is, I don't give a fuck. Fuck but the Hardys. Look at the- Look at the this, look at the division before when the Hardys were there. DCC jobbed out to them. Decay jobbed out to them. Bromans were already done. So you had two groups besides them. Now you have LAX, Laredo Kid, all the other names that I just named. You have all these amazing young talented cats. You know what I mean? Like the divisions are so much better now. The story writing is so much better. It's not just blah blah blah, delete, 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 which now isn't even fucking over in, in fucking raw. Yo, I got WWE fans on Twitter like, yo, dude, they're barely even chanting that shit now. So that's how quick they went over there, and it's irrelevant. They're not even doing the deletes. They're 45-year-old fucking Hardy boys. You know, man, like, I, I loved all the Broken Brilliant stuff, man. It was a wild ride. It was, it was something different. It was something uh, in wrestling that you're never, ever going to see again. Uh, but I don't know, man. It's it's the whole Revy breakup, you know, all the shit she was doing. Like it kind of just ruined the moment. It kind of soured. Like you know, like they they had something special, and it all kind of just oh man. I mean, it's like you said, like it was all about them. And when we look back, like you know, the Hardys, it seemed like they were doing justice for Impact, but the numbers really never changed. The numbers never reflected. Uh, it was like. Like everyone has been saying lately, it it only did wonders for the Hardys. It didn't do wonders for Impact. Uh, they couldn't capitalize. They, I mean, they couldn't translate that success to the overall Impact product. It was just uh, a couple Hardy videos went viral, and I'm sure there's some like moron WWE just like sheeps that didn't even know what wrestling show it came from. They they they, they don't know what Impact is. They don't know where to find it, and. The ones that do this say, Kenny sucks. Kenny sucks. It's not 205 Live or NXT. You you idiots, you're missing out on some of the best wrestling in the world. I'll say the best wrestling show in the world. I mean, well, I know, guess we're a little biased. This is the Impact of Silent Neil Cast, but fuck you. You know what? And you're, number one. you're 100% right on the, the specialness of the, the final deletion. Um, all the other names. You know, I can't remember what all the names are right now but they were all, like, the first two were really special. And after that, I, I did get bored of it, but it was still special because it's never been done, you know? And we we created that. Now, if you want to say it was JB and Matt, that's fucking fine. It was still created under the Impact flag. When that shit got to our waist, okay, all you had was these guys come out and say delete. There was no special show for it. There was no House of Hardys or, or Hardy House, whatever they called it. They didn't have that. WWE bit it off and flopped. They did another one recently and flopped. You know what I mean? Like, we did it, and we did it successful. Oh, they what are you talking it. about? The, uh, the, the Roman uh, and uh, Braun video people are talking about? And I heard that was terrible. Yeah, like, I got WWE heads were like, oh, this is one of the worst things I've seen. This shit was trash. Dude, you know no, what I mean? You like, can't, you're, you're not Impact. You know, you can't, you can't do what Impact does. Uh, yeah, it was, it was such a cool, uh, different... Uh, something different and unique. Uh, but the problem is, what I was just trying to say is, like, the whole beef after kind of ruined that. Because it's like, are people going to remember? Wow, remember when uh, the Hardys did that really cool thing on Impact? Or are they going to remember? Wow, remember when the Hardys and Impact had a complete fallout? You know, like, uh, it's just, it, it's unfortunate. And, uh, I, and, and so the way that, the way... The way Remy and Matt handled it with the fuck the owl stuff, like I just I lost all respect for them because I get it, you know, they're they're 
fighting for what they believe belongs to them and everything, but they screwed the entire roster when they started that smear campaign. Yeah, they said fuck the owl. They didn't say fuck the locker room, but when you say fuck the owl, you're kind of saying fuck the locker room without saying it. You know what I mean, Chef? Yo, dude, it definitely is because, say, like, um, all right, like, obviously I played sports for many years and I always played for the same team. I played for my 40 dudes, you know, my family. And if you played on my team and then, say, you just went to for the Long Island boys and all of a sudden you were like, yo, fuck 40 dudes. Yo, you're saying that towards me. You're saying that towards me and my camp. Like, we were in the same spot. We were in the same, like, we were on that same roster that every fucking week we went out and we balled against somebody. We fought against somebody. We did this together. And now you telling me, fuck you, we still under that same name. You know what I mean? That's why I was like, wow, that's some real foul shit that, you know, he allowed her to just fuck that hour shit when my boys are still under that flag, you know? I, that's the only thing I didn't like is I was like, if, that just shows a lot about your character. If it doesn't, if they feel something differently, whatever, I just take it that way because that's, that's how I see it. And you know what, to the listeners, uh, I apologize that we're uh, going on this little rant here after the episode about the whole Hardy thing, but uh, I just, I see a lot of, I see a lot of shit talk online. I see a lot of uh, negativity towards impact and like, I just feel like it's our duty sometimes to get on the show and, uh, you know, just speak up for our team, you know, I I feel like there's a lot of, it's very unfair. Uh, I feel like impact has been, uh, just kind of in an unfair position with everything because so many people uh, online, they don't even look into the situation. They just go, oh, oh the Hardys, oh, I love the Hardys. Fuck that out. Like, oh, you know, like, Chef, Chef, somebody came into the impact zone with the fuck that owl shirt, and what happened? Nigga got sent out. He got sent, sent out. As as I can say, but he got sent out. Real quick, before, before we close everything up, we did the episode. Uh, we're just having some, uh, some post-show talk here because uh, – we did the show. This is one of the the, the quickest uh, heel cast ever. Uh, we we did a really short show here, so we're just getting some uh, little uh, little post action here, uh, chatting it up uh, for the listeners. Chef, tell tell the tell them the story of the guy that showed up to the impact zone with the fuck that owl shirt. All right, I gotta be really light with how I say things because I'm not trying to get nobody in trouble. No, we, we, so, we would never do that. Would we ever do that here? I mean, there's no, never dude, any you know, controversy when we're on a podcast. Yo, dude, anytime me and you are together and we don't have, uh, like, a parental advisory, like, you know, uh, uh, the homies raving and, and, and brother underscore, we do come off kind of bugged the fuck out. But somebody had came in. We, um, Heal Team 6, noticed it. Um, I'm not going to say politely. We referenced him to the fuck out. He understood what the time was, and he was escorted out. It was just that simple. Just in case somebody's listening, I'm going to cut it just like that so nobody gets in trouble. Exactly. So bottom, bottom line, you come to the turf of the owl, wearing that fuck that owl shirt, you're going to get sent right out. And, uh, you know, luckily, this was a very, very, uh, not peaceful, but uh, it, it, nothing got physical. You know, he he, he obliged. He, uh, you know, he, he did what he had to do. He got out of there. But if somebody comes into the impact zone with that fuck the owl shirt and they, they put up an attitude and they don't want to leave, you might catch a one percenter. You might. Something might happen. You might get hit with a chair. I don't know. Something might happen to you. So that's just a warning. If anybody out there, do I have to give that warning? I don't think any. If there's anybody listening to this podcast that got to the very end and you, you own a fuck that owl shirt, you're a complete loser for listening to our podcast. Like, that, that's the thing. A lot of people, they talk shit about Impact, but they're still watching, you know? In fact, when people talk shit about Impact, it's like you're, you're only making Impact hot by giving them attention. It just, you know what, the way I see it, if you bought that shirt and you consider yourself an Impact fan and you haven't bought a James Storm shirt or an EC3 shirt or a Fortune shirt or a fucking Slap Nut shirt, you're a piece of shit. Because instead of pumping money into the company you say you like, 
you're pumping money into a, a female. I was about to start really going off a really foul language. You're, you're, buy, you're, buying, <laughs> you're buying Remy's next set of plastic surgery. You're getting her next uh, lip pull up. You're, you're paying for Matt. <laughs> You're paying for Matt's uh, pain pills, you know. You're really giving into a a bad uh, job, man. Uh, and I'm making a kidding. Uh, all right, that's it. This is a great, great episode of the Impact of Style and Deal Cast. I'm gonna wrap it up there. Me and Chef started getting wild. Uh, tune in to uh, One Night Only Turning Point 2017. Uh, it's gonna be available on Thursday night, right after Impact. Go purchase that, uh, Chef. It's been a lot of fun. Hurl Hurl said he was going to show up somewhere. There was supposed to be like a surprise Hurl uh, appearance. Like he said he was going to come back, but he didn't. I guess he's uh, I may be celebrating at Pizza Hut with the softball gang, or that that was all a story. He's busy uh, doing Yo, some other other stuff right now. Right now, fucking Hurl's is in Hooters right now. You know, with his two dollar beers. He's fucking celebrating with a team, with his team that he thought was going to fucking lose. Like, Hurls, that says a lot about you. We told you earlier we was going to get at you for doing what you did. Oh, man, uh, that, that that's hilarious. Uh, everybody, thank you for listening. Uh, it, it's been a blast. For Chef, for me, for the Impact Asylum Nation, signing out. Peace.